if you could give us a general overview, what exactly is a short sale? So a short sale, it's a real estate transaction, right? Where the estimated proceeds from sale are going to be insufficient to cover the homeowner's mortgage liens and closing costs. So everyone's probably heard the term an underwater house or underwater mortgage. Another common industry term is upside down. And basically what it's referring to is a property that is not worth what the homeowner owes on it. it. And, and what, what happens in the short sale, in a, real, in a regular transaction, the homeowner would have to cut a check at closing. Right? They'd yeah. have to bring the difference themselves to closing. In a short sale, the bank eats the difference. So my clients don't have to bring that check. They get to break even when they should be spending money. It doesn't sound like a bad deal. No. <laughs> so one of the other misconceptions I hear a lot is, I might ask a client, a buyer or a seller, just the general public, if they're familiar with what a short sale is. And they say, yes, of course, it's just like a foreclosure. Yeah, no, I mean, they're, 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 comp- well, they're related, but completely different at the same time. So most of my clients are in some stage of foreclosure because they're not paying their mortgage. They're experiencing the stress, they fall behind their mortgage, and the mortgage company starts foreclosure. What a foreclosure is, it's, it's the, the mortgage company enforcing their rights under the note mortgage. They're basically initiating a legal proceeding to get a judge's order to sell the house at a sheriff's sale. And at that sheriff's sale, the mortgage company uses the proceeds to reimburse them for the loss that incurred by the homeowner not paying their mortgage, right? The short sale um, is a voluntary transaction, right? The short sale is the homeowner saying to themselves, I am, I'm in trouble. I need to get rid of this house. And they're, they're selling it, for the most part, on their own terms, moving on their own terms. The bank has to approve the price, but mm-hmm. the homeowner gets to avoid foreclosure by doing the short sale. And that's one of the main benefits. Got it. Fantastic. Um, so, like I said, what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about what a short sale means for a buyer and what it means for sellers. Uh, we're probably going to talk longer about sellers. So let, let's start off with buyers first. Sure. Um, and as I said, we're going to try and you know dispel a lot of misconceptions here. Uh, and one of the things that we run into very frequently is a buyer might be shopping for a home online on a website like Realtor or Zillow, and they find a property with a very attractive price. And sometimes, sometimes in the listing, there might say third-party approval required. And there's no other indication that it's a short sale. And that buyer will call their real estate agent or call me and say, hey, I want to go put an offer in on this house right away. Look at this price. It's unbelievable. Well, the buyer has to understand in that situation, the price is coming from one of two places. It's either coming from the listing agent's own mind because they feel that's what the house is worth and they feel that's what the mortgage company, the seller's mortgage company is going to agree to. Or that price is actually coming directly from the seller's mortgage company because either the realtor or the homeowner has done some background work and the seller's mortgage company gave them a suggested listing price. But the buyer needs to understand when they're making their offer, even if they're making it at the full price offer, it doesn't mean the seller's mortgage company is going to agree to it, right? In every short sale, first you need to get the seller to agree to your offer, right? They're the ones, they're the gatekeeper, right? They're the ones who have to decide this offer is good enough to present to my mortgage company for approval. That's step number one. Then the mortgage company has got to approve it. So the list price that they may see on Zillow or Realtor.com is just coming from either the listing agent or a suggested price from the bank. It's not a guarantee. Got it. Makes sense. And and I'll add one of the things that we do when we're talking to a buyer is I can typically notice on the MLS if it's an approved or unapproved short sale. So if I see that it says unapproved, it's pretty fair for me to tell the buyer that they can completely ignore that price. Correct? Uh, Yeah. I mean, they they, they should go in with what they feel is a, is a fair price. I mean, they don't want to come in too low because then they're just wasting their own, they're wasting their own time and money. Um, if they're buying a short sale, they should come in with a strong offer, but one that they still feel they can make money with. Understood. Understood. Um, buyers often ask, you know, if they have some familiarity with short sales, a lot of times they think that this is going to be a forever process. I know that there's no exact answer to this, but how long would be a good assumption for a buyer to kind of put into a short sale or wait around for that property. Sure. And you're right. I mean, look, every short sale is different, right? There's different banks, different lenders, even the sellers are different, right? Some sellers are extremely enthusiastic and get you everything you need right away. And some drag their feet and they're not great with technology and they take a while to get you what you, what you need to process the transaction. But most of our short sales are probably done in three or four months. If it takes longer than that, something's wrong. Either someone's not cooperating with my office or 
something happened to the mortgage company or the loan got transferred to a new bank halfway through. So absent some extreme circumstance, most of the short sales have done in a few months. Understood. Okay, makes sense. And, you know, talking about price again, how does the bank actually arrive at the price that they approve the sale at? Sure. So at some point during the short sale process, usually after the, a complete package is submitted on behalf of the seller, the mortgage company or mortgage servicer is going to do either a BPO, which is the acronym for broker price opinion, mm -hmm. um, or they're going to do a full-blown appraisal. And, and sometimes they'll do both. And this is the bank's way of, of, of doing a valuation to determine what the house is worth. They're not going to believe me or the listing agent or the seller mm -hmm. or the buyer. They're going to do their own independent evaluation, which is either the BPO or the appraisal. And, and, and in a lot of ways, that could be the life or death of your short sale, um, mm -hmm. depending on what that comes back at. That's kind of, in a way, the bank doing its own due diligence. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really not that much different than the buyer side, right? The, the buyer's going, buyer's mortgage company is going to appraise the house too to make sure they're, they're, they're lending the correct amount. And the same is true when you're, when you're getting rid of the loan as well. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, and now when a buyer is entering into a transaction like this, at this point, they're pretty understanding that, you know, the seller is behind at the very least on their mortgage payments and probably other debts as well. And, you know, buyers want to know, are they going to receive clear and marketable title or are they going to be responsible for some of this debt that the seller hasn't paid? Sure. Well, I mean, the, the buyer needs to be smart, right? So the buyer needs to have title insurance, obviously, right? They, mm -hmm. Even when you're paying cash, you got to get an owner's policy. Obviously, when you're using a mortgage, you're going to get a lender's policy, but you should also get the owner's policy as well anyway. So in the title insurance policy ensures that you're getting clear and marketable title. Um, but that could be different than the buyer assuming you're paying certain things. So it's not that uncommon in a short sale for the buyer to have to come out of pocket to cover small items that the seller's mortgage company won't cover. So for example, if I have a client representing the seller, I have a client who has a $300 water bill. My client doesn't have the money to pay it. Their mortgage company refuses to pay it. So now we're $300 away from closing this deal. Most buyers are going to see that they're getting a good deal and we'll cover the $300 difference. But they need to be smart. When they're signing the contract, they need to make sure there's nothing in writing that compels them to pay for those items. Um, when I'm representing the seller, I give the buyer the option in writing. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, know, you have the option of paying these or walking away. Some attorneys may be a little more stringent when they're representing the sellers and say the buyer is compelled to do so. So they want to make sure they at least just have the option. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, and, and it sounds like already that all of these are going to be different. So there, there's these, sure. you know, intricacies to each transaction that a buyer is going to have to pay attention to. Um, last but not least, while we're talking about buyers here, you know, Zillow is one of those websites that most buyers tend to use. And we might be talking about a short sale and they'll call me and say, Adam, you know, on Zillow, it says that this property is not a short sale, that it's a pre foreclosure. And I know from using Zillow that when they say pre foreclosure, that means that a Liz pendants has been placed on the property. Sure. So that's kind of Greek to most buyers. What does that mean when there's a Liz pendants on the property? Yeah, it's just putting the public on notice that the property is involved in litigation. That's all. Got it. I mean, and what it means to me is a foreclosure started, right? The okay. complaint's been filed, but it's it's a, it's it's just a legal document. Or it's a legal uh, pleading showing that the property is involved in, in litigation. Got it. And, and while we're talking about it, I, I'd add to that whatever price you see on that website on Zillow, again, is actually at this point, the Zestimate, which is even further from the truth than whatever asking price that the, uh, you know, the listing agent in this case chose. Um, yeah, sure. um, before we jump into talking a little bit about the coronavirus and how that's affecting things now, is there anything that you have to add for homeowners or sellers or, you know, anything that we missed? The most important thing is call us first. Don't call the bank first. And, and that's going to come into play when we talk about coronavirus it's so hard to avoid talking about it so <laughs> it's completely taken over our, uh, yeah. our our lives at the moment but um you know i i really see parallels between this and the financial crisis um from 12 years ago and you know the crazy thing is, is i'm still doing short sales i'm still feeling the effect of the financial crisis from 12 years ago still doing short sales from 12 years ago and yeah. i think the current situation is going to be even worse okay yeah. And that's, you know, a, a lot of the stuff that we talked about already, you know, at least in the near future, I don't see changing as far as the process of a short sale. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about the coronavirus and how that's affecting things. Um, I've already seen an effect on it in some of the, you know, transactions that we're handling. And, yeah. you know, I'm sure you could communicate this, you, you know, 
what right now, just in the process of a short sale, you know, is it fair to say that things are just taking longer because the banks are, you know, backed up and then you did yeah. it with other phone calls? <clears throat> well, I'm seeing three, at least initially three big differences. One, you're right. They're taking a lot longer to process, you know, where it took an hour to talk to select portfolio servicing, mortgage servicer before it's not taking two hours, yeah. right? Because you got the normal hour that it would typically take and you have a hundred thousand people calling asking for deferment or forbearance. Right. So they're taking a little bit longer, but they're still closing, which is good. Um, that's one side effect that I'm seeing. Side effect number two, <clears throat> now everybody has a hardship, right? Yeah, Everybody's got a hardship now. You know, sometimes I talk to clients and I'm pulling at strings trying to find, you got to give me something, man. Give me, give me a reason why <laughs> you can't pay your mortgage. Now everybody's got one, yeah. right? Nobody's working. Everybody's income is reduced um, for the most part. So <clears throat> now everybody's got a hardship, which is making, I think going to make them a little easier to get approved. And then the third thing I'm seeing is all my sheriff sales are getting canceled. You know, all these files where I was against these extreme time constraints, the sheriff sales are all getting canceled, which is buying me an indefinite amount of time. So those are some of the immediate changes that I'm seeing. Although I anticipate over the next year that the, the number of short sales I see will probably increase at numbers that I can't even guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm sure that very well may become true. Uh, you know, one of the things I was curious about is we know that recently um, the, the governor in the state of New Jersey here, they came out with this 90 day grace period sure. on, you know, mortgage payments. So does that mean that if I was in the process of going through a short sale, does the bank come back and say, Hey, you know what, you're good now. We don't need to proceed with this because we're giving you 90 days. I, I mean, I, hypothetically they could, but I haven't seen that scenario. I, have, I haven't seen that scenario yet. And I mean, again, and <clears throat> it's great that we have these programs. It's great that the 90 day grace period exists. It's great that mortgage companies are offering two terms. Homeowners are probably familiar with now deferment and forbearance. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I think in the end, these programs are going to do, do a lot of harm as well. You know, drawing on parallels to the financial crisis. And again, reiterating why they should be contacting me or you first rather than their bank. You know, during the financial crisis, there was also programs like this. You know, maybe not the 90 day grace period, but there was forbearance and there was deferment and there was programs like HAMP, Home Affordable Modification Program, these ultimate great programs that the government came out with. And just like the ones that are out now, homeowners call and apply for them without really knowing what they're getting themselves into. And, you know, five, six, seven months later, they realize they've either not gotten the help they needed, their help was completely denied, or they did get the help and now they need even more. And what that gives rise to is people essentially realizing now they have to sell their home, which is why the short sales won't increase. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. I mean, that's, you know, obviously it's the first place that people go to is, is their home to sell in a time like this, whether they have equity and that's the only cash that they have and they have to sell it to cash out or, you know, now they have this debt and they don't have any equity and, you know, that's the route of the short sale. Um, you know, Coronavirus aside, one of the things that makes me think of too is I hear you keep referencing the financial crisis. You know, sure. we've seen short sales happen even in the best of markets too. And, and for example, sure. where we are in Atlantic and Cape May counties, you know, the financial crisis, we'll call it 08. You know, when we had the casinos close in 2014 in Atlantic City, that's yeah. when we saw the most of our short sales because of all the employment yeah, that was lost during that time. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, any, any, any crisis is going to give rise to to, uh, to situations like this. You're, you're absolutely right. And, you know, just to harp on the 90 day grace period one last time, you know, I can't speak for all mortgage companies, but um, Shellpoint Mortgage Servicing, mm -hmm. they're making the homeowner pay all three payments back at the end of the 90 day period. So if your payments are 2000 a month and you get the 90 day grace period, that means on the fourth month, you owe $6,000 plus the $2,000 for that month. So eight grand you're not going to have the eight grand yeah, to make that payment. Uh, no. So what's going to happen is you're going to have to do a loan modification. And that's another interview we can do about how they don't really work so well, but the homeowners, it's only going to take so long for the homeowner to realize that's not the answer either. And then they'll be calling us for the short. Yeah. Yeah. And, and without going into a different topic, you know, the, at the end of the day, the mortgage companies want to get paid. Right. And, and that's yeah. why, you know, when they introduced this 90 day grace period, the mortgage company, some of them overnight, increased their minimum credit scores and the minimum reserve account balance that they wanted buyers to have because, you know, naturally yep. they want to get paid. Yeah, I mean, look, none, none of us know the future here, but it doesn't look, it, it, from, from where I'm sitting, it doesn't look good for the market. Yeah. Well, you know, thankfully, 
um, you know, there, there is solutions out there and, and short sales being one of them and you know, sure. potentially one of the best solutions if you find yourself in this unfortunate circumstance. Absolutely. So, Bill, I appreciate it so much. Thanks for giving us this rundown and filling us in on everything short sale. Um, before I let you go, is there anything that we missed? And if not, you know, what's the best way for folks to get a hold of you? Yeah, I mean, look, you know, obviously we've been just about 40 minutes we've been talking. It's, you know, I can't go through 15 years of experience in 42 minutes. And, you know, everybody, every short sale is different. Every bank's different. Loan types are different. But again, that's just why it's super important for homeowners to contact us first so we mm -hmm. can guide them in the right way. So, you know, look, I'm never going to push a homeowner into a certain option. I'm never going to say you have to do a short sale. My job as the attorney is to explain the pros and cons of all their options and let them select the one that's best for themselves. It just so happens that if they're calling me nine times out of 10, the best option they have is a short sale anyway. Uh, best way to contact me is 856-261-5816. Um, that is my cell phone. I know a lot of attorneys don't give their cell phones out to the general public. Um, I do. You put it on this video now. You're going to get yeah, the Yeah, I mean, listen, I've always done it my entire career. It's one of the reasons why I'm successful. I, I answer text messages, phone calls. Um, a lot of times I'll schedule consultations over text. Uh, my office number, if you want something more formal, is 856-528-2012. Um, if you Google the Sokol Firm, New Jersey, you'll get my website, you'll get my email. Um, it's all there. Perfect. And what we'll do is wherever this video ends up living or hosting, we'll put your, your website link and your office phone number just below it. So if anybody needs to get a hold of you, they can. And if not, if you choose to contact us first, you know, we have a direct connection to introduce you to everybody at the Sokol Firm as well. Yeah, now you can put my, you have my email from my email yep. signature, I'm sure. You can throw yep. that in there. Bill. Absolutely. Will do. Well, Bill, I appreciate it so much. It's been fantastic. Thanks again. Yeah, Adam, pleasure, man. Thank you very much. So have a good day. Stay safe. Yeah, you too.